Hey everyone, this is Peter and today I'll be showing you how to hand paint tiling fur textures for games. So first things first, I gathered uh, several references of actual fur or hand painted fur and I have this great tutorial by CG Cookie which I'm going to be trying to follow along with here because this is actually fairly new to me. I don't usually paint fur so this will be an experiment. So we're going to go file new 2048 by 2048 document. Um, 300 pixels per inch and fill this document with a, a gray color just like 50% gray and begin sketching these vertical curves so basically how I've been thinking of it is just you have like these uh, these really stretched out S shapes and the fur that I was looking at was uh, kind of like a, a polar bear or wolf fur or something it's very um, it's in clumps. It has like these, these little tufts. So um, once you've drawn out just this general shape, then you want to add shadows between each tuft of fur because that's uh, that's where light won't be able to reach. It's those little those little triangles that you see the um, the little divots in between each tuft. And there are lots of different kinds of fur I've learned. Uh, I didn't think about this uh, too much when I um, before I got into this but I think that there's like there's some really short fur versus like some really long matty fur um, but here you'll see me go filter other offset um, and that is me uh, checking the tiling of course and we've got the it breaks it up into four so you can see the seams and we'll want to blend the seams together so that's pretty important to do throughout this whole uh, throughout this whole painting because then that's where you'll see if it's uh, going to tile well or not and once you're done you can always filter offset texture and as many times as you need to um, but now I am using a soft brush to add volume using just a lighter gray color so we're not even going uh, anywhere close to white this is still still closer to 50 percent 30 percent gray and i am just trying to to find where the light is going to create highlights on this fur um and just get a, a general sense of um, contrast here so um like this tutorial by cg cookie says you don't want to push um you don't want to force the contrast too much because i'm finding that that makes it look pretty fake um, of course, we're, we're still going for like a stylized look here, so... Um, but anyways, now you're allowed to zoom in and begin refining your strokes. And this is really the bulk of uh, the fur, so you don't have to draw every stroke by... <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat that again throughout this tutorial, but you don't have to draw every single strand of hair because that that's really tedious and that's part of the reason why we're going something more simplified and hand painted because we can um, we can get the impression of fur without actually painting every single strand and it's the same thing with grass and I'll probably do grass next week but you don't want to paint every single strand of grass um, that would just take way too long and um, might not actually get the result that you're looking for um, but what I'm actually also doing here is uh, blending the lighter and darker areas together with a soft brush to give it sort of this gradient effect because once you've put in those highlights, they're really, um, they stand out a little bit too much. It um, makes it look like um, like the whoever this fur belongs to actually went and uh, took a marker and <laughs> outlined it. That's, that's not the look we quite want. So if you um, select between the darkest and the lightest colors you have on here you can kind of blend in between just by painting softly on top and make sure you've got that pressure sensitivity going and just in general this uh, this whole process is it's about as quick as you're gonna get I <laughs> I've tried a couple of times I, I did those recordings and I guess it's just um, you have to put in the time to do this refining stage and there's only so much that uh, that line work and um, texture brushes can get you so if you 
actually sit down and, and detail these things out. This probably took me like an hour, hour and a half. So I think uh, it's, it's time well spent, <laughs> even if it looks ugly in the beginning. Oh, and here's a tip. So uh, I noticed a lot of the highlights that I was seeing on fur and the highlights that I was uh, seeing in the references were sort of in these W or M shapes. So if you think about doing the highlights in kind of like letters almost, uh, they have like this zigzag pattern uh, horizontally across the fur. And it's like um, it's like in bands of light, kind of like the, the metal uh, texture that we did a couple weeks ago. So it's got this, um, it still has the sheen going horizontally across, but because it's fur, it's sort of broken up a little bit. So that's, I think, why the zigzag um, seems to look okay. And that's, it's kind of tough sometimes because you, you might uh, add the a highlight that's too strong or like you saw me just uh, undo what I uh, painted in there. Uh, sometimes you might uh, cut away into the fur and it doesn't quite make sense. It's okay to be zoomed out and just think to yourself, hey, does this is this working? Because if it's not, then I can just paint over it. I don't want that to, to be in the final painting. And uh, you want to blend with uh, strokes sometimes, uh, not just the soft brush. So getting the, um, the strands of hair to show in certain areas. So, uh, and here's another tip. So, like I mentioned before, simplify when possible. You don't have to draw every single strand of hair. So I had made the mistake of doing this with grass one time. So I thought um, back in high school, I would I would sit down and I would draw every single blade of grass with my pencil, and um, it was it looked pretty good. <laughs> it looked okay at least in the end, but it um, it just took forever because that's that's a lot of blades of grass. <laughs> and there's uh, uh, my my professor. Um, so I've had several professors tell me that if we just wanted to um, get a good rendering, we would use a camera, right? Because cameras, it's, it just takes a picture for you and you're done. So it's not as important that we draw every single line. It's more of the, the feeling that we give, the, the sense of um, the sense of fur, the uh, it's yeah, it's not about an accurate, 100% uh, accurate rendering of fur. Um, but uh, one of those things that would contribute to that is actually keeping each tuft of fur flowing in the same general direction. So you see, I've I've kind of picked these to be horizontal, or I've picked the direction to be vertical. So you see, the light hits it horizontally, but the general S curve of these strands of fur are it's vertical. Um, it's running from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And in general, you want to keep uh, your forms going that same direction. So um, if it's diagonal or horizontal or whichever way, um, and you'll see some kind of curve to the right and some kind of curve to the left, but um, it will look kind of weird and tile funny if you don't have them going in the same direction. And that's uh, something you'll need to experiment with, of course, but that's uh, just one thing that I noted while I was doing this. Now, the other um, thing to note is that you have uh, you can have little offshoots. Like uh, I'm drawing in um, little tufts of hair shooting off to each side, and um, that's uh, this is the detail stage, right? So you don't. It's okay to start with those large soft brushes at first, but uh, before you get into the details. But then um, at this point, we are refining. So we want to take our, our smaller brush. Um, smaller is relative since this is a fairly large canvas, but I think uh, I'm thinking like size five to 20 uh, brush. Um, and we're, we're still using that same uh, soft round brush that um, we've used throughout this painting. Um, because when it's smaller, it looks, you don't get that same blurry look. And it's, uh, it's kind of tricky to get a natural feeling with the fur. Um, so I noticed that uh, some of these just kind of look like 
manufactured almost and but if you have a certain wave to it um, more of an s shape instead of just a c shape then it, it kind of gave it a little bit more life um, and that's something i'll have to to practice on my own as well um, just in general trying to get the that uh, uh f study of fur and i i was actually working with fur this week uh because i i sew uh, little stuffed animals and things for conventions um so i've gotten a little bit of real life exposure which i think has been helpful so uh like i mentioned you've got to break up those large flowing lines with little pieces of hair going in the opposite direction so that's those little uh those little offshoots and it's um it's just to break up the visual direction because like if you have this big curve going uh half the page then um it's sort of uninteresting but as soon as you have some little tufts uh, little strands of hair um poking off maybe in the uh, curving to the right instead of the left then it, it becomes a little bit more interesting so that's um that we want to at least for this purpose we want to be juxtaposing that um, the the right curves and the left curves and the darks and the highlights and those uh they're like visual easter eggs uh, to the people looking at us they see those details they see the contrast in it for some reason it's pleasing to the eye um but now i am just kind of scanning over the whole thing and moving around a bunch looking for areas where um my seams might not be great and looking for areas that I haven't really developed like maybe I missed them as I was panning around the scene so definitely make sure you you go through and hit those highlights and make sure you've got the a variety of um, a variety of curves and uh, contrasts so now I'm going through and hitting this with a couple of adjustments and that'll depend on how you painted it, whether you started darker or later than I did. But um, I actually decided to up the contrast and increase the brightness a little bit. So I um, I think that really made some of the details pop a little bit. And uh, from there, I just decided to clean up some things. I noticed that some of the curves weren't quite uh, as uh, blended as I wanted them to be, or they... Um, they weren't curvy enough <laughs> in some cases so i just kind of went through and got added some contrast added a couple little line details and uh random areas that i noticed needed a little bit of work and um now from there we will actually want to um, create a new layer with a color blending mode because as you notice we've work we're working in black and white so um you don't have to pick bright blue here or anything. I, I thought, oh, maybe my fur will be blue, but um, I actually decided on more of a brownish, orange, reddish color, and that um, that'll be depending on your subject matter. But in, in general, just remember this uh, color. Uh, the the blending mode you want is color. At least I found that worked better than hue for me in this case. Um, and now from there since you have this your colors on a different layer you can paint in patches of other colors to make your fur more vibrant so i think um the one issue with just a, a flat yellow or orange color was that it looks it's all monochromatic it's um it it's not as vibrant and doesn't have that visual interest that um fur would normally have so um especially if this is like a hand-painted stylized fur um, you want to go add in uh, splotches of other colors like red or maybe maybe even some bluish greens um, I experimented with that a little bit too I I think it the fur was becoming a little bit too warm so I ended up uh, using a very light green to help um, bring down that, uh, that saturation so it's okay to zoom out as well and just to get the the bigger picture and sometimes it helps to squint actually so you're looking at this canvas and you're squinting at it and then you can kind of tell oh is there something that stands out too much or is there uh, a color that is uh too overwhelming here 
and that'll be the especially if you're like you're you're looking at this farther away in a game too uh, that'll be the impression that people get so now um pretty much the last thing i do here is i am playing around a bit with the dodge tool because i wanted my fur to be a little bit shiny almost uh glowing kind of magical so use the dodge tool to increase the contrast on your highlights and if you set the um the range uh you see in the top bar um right under layer there's the um it says highlights so if you have it set to highlights um it'll blast those uh those brighter areas and i really only have the exposure set to like 14 percent because it's it's a the dodge tool can get pretty strong sometimes so um, you don't want to use a super high exposure and as you can see i'm just kind of hitting the the edges and the, the tips really and thinking about where would the light bounce off in particular so then i played around with the i merged everything and uh, played around with the vibrance and saturation and just tried to get the the right feeling that i wanted um then lastly it was just um the same thing we've been doing in the other tutorials edit define pattern and um create a new fill layer with uh the pattern um mode and then you can see how it tiles but thanks for watching and uh tune in next week for another tutorial thanks everyone <laughs>